Hi there and welcome to Fiber and Paper, another video demonstration, this time not with planners but with my very first fiber video uh, which has to do with Knitting 101. So what I'm going to talk to you today is just give uh, to you about today is to just give you a little bit of an idea about what to expect should you want to start knitting or if you're a beginning knitter, kind of refresh all of the things that you kind of have learned along the way prior to starting. Um, so this first video is going to be the first in a series of of, de of knitting techniques and and uh, projects and all of the things that have to do with knitting, aimed at um, the beginner and that means you if you are watching this so um, the thing that you want to consider before you even begin to knit is what kind of equipment um, you might end up needing I know a lot of people who uh, knit want to try it who want to learn how to knit want to try and get as many things as possible um, I'm not one to talk about not uh, splurging but for the very 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 first project that you're going to knit you should probably pick something um, min you should probably pick a very minimal setup because then you can see what kinds of things you'll you'll need to buy because uh, the mistake that a lot of people end up making with any craft is just ending up buying too many things that they don't end up using or needing and what I'm going to talk to you about is the th the, the couple of things that you really do end up using um, when you're beginning. So let's talk about very first of all um, your yarn. I guess for the people who are into planners and stuff like that you could compare yarn um, to the actual planner. You will end up wanting to stash um, and it is an official affliction. No, I'm just kidding. It's not an affliction. Uh, actually, it is. I have too much. But anyway, carrying on. Um, the very first thing that you're going to need is, before you even buy your yarn, is to figure out uh, what kind of yarn feels comfortable to you. I know that uh, there are a lot of discussions about, oh, you can only use uh, animal fiber or, or I only use man-made fibers. But honestly, it really is all about what is comfortable in your hands. Not only that, but what kind of project you intend to make. I'm going to go ahead and assume, however, that if you've never knitted before, the first things you want to do are, is just basically knit a couple of, of, of test pieces that may or may not end up being something. So with that in mind, choose something that feels good in your hand, but doesn't necessarily, it doesn't have to necessarily have to be expensive. That's the most important thing because you're going to mess up probably. And uh, the worst thing to do is buy that beautiful skein or ball of yarn that costs you about 20 bucks and end up ruining it. So let's start with a basic. I've got something here from a company called Rico. It's available here in Germany through uh, Rödelwolle. And um, it was very inexpensive, if I'm not mistaken. This cost me about two euro, something like that. Okay. Um, I don't remember. I bought it ages ago. So the first thing, when you're in the store or online and would like to buy a ball of yarn to try knitting, the first thing you want to do is go ahead and examine the label. So I've gone ahead and taken it off another ball of yarn and I'm going to start going through the label with you just so that you can have an idea of uh, what it all means before you even get to the shop or decide to buy something. So this is usually wrapped around the ball like so, keeping it together as well as being informative. And um, it says here Rico Baby because I guess this yarn is intended to make um, baby clothes with. Um, I don't really know, it, I don't really feel that it's specifically for that, you could basically use it for whatever. Um, but the color range uh, of this particular um, series is kind of geared towards baby items. So when you look at the when you look at the, the label at first, you're going to end up seeing a lot of information with a lot of numbers. This will probably be a little bit confusing to you, so let's go ahead and go through that first. Here it says Classic DK Rico Baby. Classic DK basically just means classic double knit yarn. That's talking about the weight of the yarn. That is to say, 
how thin or how thick the yarn is. So a double knit yarn will look like this. And if you compare it, I'm gonna go, go ahead and bring over, I'll put the label down for a moment. Another piece that I'm working on or have been working on and let you have a look at how they compare side to side. So as you can see, this particular yarn is made up of four strands of other four strands of four strands of yarn together that make up the actual strand. The other one is a single, which means there is not there aren't other strands of yarn. This is just the one strand and it's much thicker. So this is double knit. Yeah, it's much thinner. And the dark green is a heavy Aran weight, which is also another name, like double knit, to describe um, the weight of the yarn. Yeah. So basically, it's an indication of the needle size that you're going to need. But before we get into that, you don't even have to know because it tells you on the label. So let's go ahead and see what else the yarn has in store for us. Mm -hmm. This is a 50 gram ball of yarn, mm -hmm. which has a length of 165 meters. If you're in the US, that's going to tell you yards. Yeah. So let's see what the yarn is made up of. This is a 50% acrylic with a 50% polyamide. Basically, this is a man-made yarn. There are no animal fibers or vegetable fibers in this. And um, the reason I chose this yarn is because I do intend eventually out of this yarn to make um, a, a gift for someone. And um, I think as a mother, the worst thing that somebody could possibly give me is something that I would have to hand wash very carefully because you were not going to have time for that. So... Um, which is not to say that I don't appreciate uh, beautiful gifts. It just has to also be practical. So for me, it was much more important that I gave th this mother uh, a gift that she would be able to just throw in the machine and, um, and, and then not worry about. So let's have a look at the rest of this. So 50%, 50%. So without even understanding what DK or Iran or whatever else means, it will tell you on the label itself exactly which needle size you are going to need. And this one requires 30, uh, th three and a half to four. So three and a half to four is applicable for both the, for knitting needles and for crochet needles. So you don't need a different size crochet needle or knitting needle, yeah? Here, this is an indication of how many stitches you are going to need and how many rows you're going to knit for a 10 by 10 sample swatch of knitting. Here it's going to tell you that you need to cast on 22 stitches. That is going to be, I'm going to explain to you what that is in, an, in another video. But first, let's just go through the label. And you're going to knit 28 rows. Yeah. And by the time you're finished knitting 22 by 28, you are going to end up with a swatch the size of 10 centimeters by 10 centimeters. Yeah. It's going to tell you how big your knitted piece is going to be and how much you're going to need to cast on and all of these kinds of things. So, but let's get to that another time. I'm just explaining now the label and that's what this is. This is telling you that the average person will knit 28 rows if they cast on 22 and they will end up with a swatch of 10 centimeters by 10 centimeters. They also tell you on the label for However, I think on other labels, it's always a sweater, if I'm not mistaken. Um, it, this is an indication of how many grams of wool you are going to need to knit a particular item for a certain age group. So for the age group of nine months to 12 months, so nine months to a year, as I said, this is a baby uh, wool, you are going to need 
150 grams yeah of this of this yarn which will equal three balls yeah so if one is 50 then three together makes 150 so you're only going to need three to make a baby sweater yeah so that's what that means and here are all of the laundry instructions yeah and here it says you are going to be able to wash this in the washing machine yeah with the either i would use the wool program if possible there's a single line underneath the the tub which basically just means that it's it doesn't have to be the wool program but i would recommend it the the with one line it means that you have it's um for your easy care yeah you are also allowed to put this in the dryer because it is a man-made um yarn i would use a very very low temperature so i would go ahead and and be careful with that this indicates that you're not allowed to bleach it yeah and this indicates that you're not allowed to iron it so you are allowed to put it in the washing machine at 30 degrees on your um, gentle cycle yeah and in your dryer but also on a low temperature and actually, I have no idea what this P means, but I could research that for you and put the information. I should have researched this before. Yeah. So this is the basic label um, on a yarn ball. And if you look at the other side, this is Farbe means color. So this is telling you that in this series of Rico Baby Classic DK, the color that I've used is color number 25 which is a beautiful sort of i don't know robin's egg blue i'd like to call it i it's one of my favorite colors in the whole world anyway that's what it should say on the label beautiful um and every batch of yarn that's dyed has a batch number so that means these are a series of of yarn balls that have been dyed in the same batch that means they are all going to have exactly the same color so if this number were different that means it is the same color but not from the same batch that means it is highly possible that two balls from two separate batches have a slight slight um, difference in tone um, however with commercial yarn I personally have never found it to be so drastic that it stands out in the knitting. Um, but as I said, they do have to indicate that because usually um, if you're knitting for a larger project, you'll end up buying um, your yarn in bags of 10. And usually these 10 balls have been dyed um, at the same time and therefore the number indicating that they have been all dyed together in the same batch. So, that was a very, very short introduction to the label on your very, very first ball or skein of yarn.